Hey, what's up everyone? It's Patrick and welcome to my guide to the quest Wild Guthic Sleeps on RuneScape 3. On screen right now is the skill and quest requirements for this quest. There is an item list for this guide as well, but it's on the next slide right after this as I couldn't fit everything on one, but here are the requirements. If you want to see it, feel free to pause this if you want to take a better look as I'm going to show you the item list now. Here is the item list. If you're an Iron Man, there's a more detailed item list in the description below explaining where to get all the items if you need help on any of these. But the reason why the items are in two different colors is because there's a lot of stuff. It is possible to carry pretty much all of it at once, but you also have to consider that you pick things up from the quest as you're doing it and you might need some space for food. If you try to bring everything at once, you're going to end up having to juggle the items in your inventory, which is even more annoying than just going to the bank later. That's what I tried to do and I don't recommend it. You should just bring the items in the green text for now and I'll tell you later when to get the other stuff. Also near the bottom where it says armor and weapon for two different combat styles, you don't need both until the very end of the quest so just bring one for now and I would not recommend magic because if you look at the top of the list you have to be on the lunar spellbook to start. We will be switching to the regular spellbook later and I'll tell you when to do that as well but the lunar spellbook is not great for combat spells. Anyways feel free to pause this if you need it as I'm going to get to the next part now. This video is brought to you by the awesome members of my Patreon. If you want access to some exclusive perks, check out the link in the description below. Enjoy the video, everyone. To start, go to the building inside the Legends Guild that's shown by a yellow marker on his map. You can get there or near there using fairy ring code BLR or the Artie Lodestone. Feel free to pause this if you need it as I'm going to get into the guide now. Speak to Radimus Urkel, select option four. Yes, I'm interested. Where do I report and accept the quest? Go to his building in Taverly, shown by a yellow marker on his map. You can easily get there using the Taverly, Falador, or Birthorp lodestones. Speak to Ivy Sophista, then select options 1 and 4. Climb the stairs. Speak to Theoris Semphir and defeat the two assassins that appear. After the fight, speak to him again and select options 1. Two. Two. Three. Four. Go to Reldo in the Varric Library. You can get there using the Varric Lodestone. Just a heads up, Reldo is involved in a lot of quests in this game, and these options can vary a lot based on what you may or may not have done with the other quests. I will list the chat options with the numbers anyways, but I wouldn't recommend actually reading what you're selecting as they may be different. Speak to Reldo and select the chat options right on screen.
Go to the hunting area north of Ooglock. You can get near there using the Ooglock Lodestone, figuring code AKS, or a teleport to the Warforged dig site, like using the Archaeology Journal to teleport to the guild, then using the table. Unfortunately, all those teleports come with some kind of requirement. Worst case, you can use the Yanil Lodestone and run from there. You'll need one free inventory space, speak to the hunting expert, and select options 2, 2, 3, 4 to receive a Mortmeyer Fungus. Go west until you see a square shaped hole or pit. Click on the square shaped pit to make a trap, then use the Mortmeyer fungus on the pit trap. Wait for the wild Brav to walk over it and fall in, then dismantle the collapsed trap to receive it in your inventory. Head east back to the hunting expert. Speak to the hunting expert and select option 2, a creature to help track down a person. You need to dismiss or pick up any followers you have before you continue. Go to this house west of the fight arena shown by a yell marker on this map. If you brought a Ring of Karos A, put that on, speak to the Khazard Launderer, and select options 2 and 2. If you do not have the ring, you have to take out 5k out of your coin pouch, use it on him, and select options 2 and 1 to pay him instead. Regardless of which way you did this, you'll receive Dirty Laundry. After receiving the Dirty Laundry, run northwest towards the building shown by a yellow marker on this map. Climb over the crumbled wall located near the southeastern part of the building and click continue in your chat box. Go next to the broken table in the western room, drop your bro out from your inventory, then use the dirty laundry on it. Search the broken table to find a trap door table, open it and climb into it. Open a door, go west, make the first turn north, and follow that path all the way around. At the end, climb down the stairs. This next part will vary for different players, so you have to look at this in your own game. Right click the old battered door and choose search, which will open a window. If you look at the word prohibited closely, you'll see one of the letters isn't actually a letter, but it's a symbol for one of the runes, possibly turned sideways to fit the word. It's going to be either a mind rune or one of the elemental runes. I put in the video what each symbol looks like, what letter they replaced, and what rune it is. When you figure it out, close out of this window and use that rune on the door. After using the correct rune on the door, right click the old battered door again, choose search, and select option 1. Yes, I'm an awesome thief, I'll disable it easily, then open the door again. When you're through the door, any earth, fire, water, or mine runes you have can be dropped in case you need space. Do not drop your air runes or anything I didn't name. Go towards the east wall, right click the painting, choose search, and select option 1. Yes, I'll flip the catch and see what happens. 
This next part will vary for different players. You need your chat box open for the next part if it's not already. You have to right click random bookcases around the room and choose search until one says click with an exclamation point in your chat box. Whichever bookcase it was, you'll see there's several wires coming out of it. It's very hard to see, but one of those wires will glow a bit. It's slightly easier to see if you look at it next to another wire, as one will be slightly brighter. You want to follow the glowing wire to the next bookcase, right click that bookcase, choose search, which will give you another click in your chat box. Your goal is to do this until the cage in the southeast corner no longer has electricity around the door or gate. Make sure you get the click with the exclamation point with each search. If not, that means you have to try another bookcase. If you can't really distinguish the glowing wire that well i wouldn't stress too much about it i don't think there are any real consequences to get in the wrong one you should be able to just try another one it took me six searches to turn the electricity off just try to look for glowing wires if you think you see it just go for it i wrote all this on screen but when the electricity turns off you get a click in your chat box followed by you hear a locking sound coming from a large door in the north you can also just look at the door gate for a few seconds to check if the electricity animation is still there once the electricity is gone, open a gate or door in the southeast corner, then right click, right click the spiral staircase and choose search. It should tell you in your chat box that you disabled the trap, then you can climb up. Right click the desk and choose search to receive Movario's notes volume 1. Right click the notes, read it and flip through all the pages. Next to the desk, right click the waste paper basket, choose pick up, then right click it in your inventory and choose search to receive a small key. Right click the bookcase on the west wall and choose search. Use the ruby key on the bookcase, then climb up the stairs just north of you. Right click the bed and choose search to uncover a chest. Use the ruby key on the bed chest. You need three or more free inventory spaces. Right click the bed chest and choose search which should give you chat options. Select option one. Yes I'll attempt it. You can fail this and failing in this case could just mean not finding a trap at all and not getting a chat option. Just keep trying. If you're successful it'll tell you in your chat box they disarmed a trap and you can open searcher to receive research notes, a strange key loop, and strange key teeth. Make sure you get these three items before you continue. You might need to clear out some space. Climb back down the next two set of stairs to go back to the wire room. Next to the painting on the east wall, cross over the broken wall. Right click the drawers and choose search to find a paper. At this point you should have the paper from this drawer, Movario's Notes Volume 2, a strange key loop, strange key teeth from the bed chest, the key from his garbage can, and volume one of his notes from his desk. You want to make sure you have everything in order before you leave or else you won't be able to progress with the quest and we'll have to come back here. Pick up your Broav. If you don't see it near you, right click the summoning icon at the top of your ability bar and choose call follower. Apparently wearing weight deucing equipment such as boots of lightness will cause this part not to work so you want to take those off. Look at the thermometer and make note of the number that it shows. It's not the same for everyone. You then want to go to your equipment tab and look at your weight at the bottom. You want to note which number is higher, then take the difference between the two numbers. You need to pick up that amount in weight to the south. They come in 1 kg, 2 kg, and 5 kg, taking up one inventory space each, so try to go for the bigger ones if possible. When you have all your weights, cross back over the broken wall and climb up the spiral staircase. Now, what you do with the weights depends on whether or not your weight was more or less than the number of the thermometer. If your weight is less than the number of the thermometer, then you want to keep the weights in your inventory as holding them will increase your own weight, making the numbers equal. If your weight is more, then you want to place the weights that you picked up on the statue just north of the stairs. This will cause the thermometer's number to go up, making it even with your weight. Assuming that was done correctly, meaning your weight is even with the number of the thermometer, you should all be able to exit through the door to the east. Once you're out of there, go all the way east through the door and climb up the ladder at the end to leave the hideout.
head back to his building entirely. Climb the stairs. Speak to Theorist, then select options 2 and 5. Go to the area behind McGruber's Woods, which you can easily get to using the Sears Village Lodestone or Fairing Code ALS. You get a cutscene and three mercenaries will spawn. Watch the cutscene, then defeat all three. Search the dead mercenaries, then speak to the wounded guardian of Armadillo. You know, all the NPCs lying on the ground. Head to the Sears Village Bar. In the northeast corner, climb up the staircase. Speak to Idria and select options 1, 2, 3. Go to Faldor Park, you can easily get near there using the Faldor Lodestone or a regular Faldor Teleport. Speak to Certification and select the option that says while Guthic sleeps, the number may vary. Head to the White Knight's castle. You can walk or use the Ring of Respawn to teleport to Faldor if you're lazy. Go into the Eastern Room. Speak to Akrase, then select options 3 and 1. He'll give you a Tele Orb and teleport you to Draenor. Look for a shady stranger. I found one to the south by the water and the willow trees. Use a tele orb in your inventory on him. This may take several tries. If successful, the tele orb will disappear from your inventory and it will tell you in your chat box. Go back to Akrase in the White Knight's castle in Faldor.
Speak to Accuracy to get a cutscene. Speak to Theorus and select options 2 and 1. Speak to Theorus again and select option 3. Can you teleport me to Port Saturn, please? Go north to the Magic Rune Shop. Speak to Betty and select option 1 twice. Speak to Betty again, then select options 3 and 2. She should have placed a Snapdragon seed on the counter. If not, talk to her again until she does. Use the pink dye on your lantern lens. Stay in the doorway inside the building and use the rose tinted lens on the counter. The seed should get a little bigger. Search the counter and take the enriched Snapdragon seed. Go back to the Eastern Room in the White Knight's Castle in Faldor. Speak to Theorus, then select options 1 and 3. Head to the western side of the castle. Climb the staircase to the top floor. Use the enriched Snapdragon seed on her patch. Go back to a room on the eastern side of the castle. Speak to Theorist and select option 1. I've planted the enriched Snapdragon seed. You can ignore the rest of the chat options when you get them. From your Lunar Spellbook, you're going to use the NPC contact spell three times to talk to three different people. The Slayer Masters Turiel, Duradel, and Maskina. And all three times you'll select option 1. I need to talk to you about Lucian. Go to Hazelmere east of Yanil. You can use Fairy Ring Code CLS or use the Yanil Lodestone and run east from there.
climb up the ladder. Speak to Hazelmere. Head back to the western side of the White Knight's Castle in Falador. Climb the stairs all the way to the top. Pick herbs on the patch again in Rich Snapdragon Herb. Go back to the eastern side of the White Knight's Castle. Use the Enriched Snapdragon on the Truth Serum. Open and search the cupboard on the west wall to receive charcoal and papyrus. Open the cell door to go inside the cell. Use the Super Truth Serum on the Shady Stranger. Correct chat option will vary for everyone, so just go through all of them until one works and he drinks it. Open the cell door to get out and speak to Idria. Use the NPC contact spell again. Speak to Sarissus and select option 1. I need to talk to Bell Lucian. Go to the Warriors Guild in Berthorp. You can get near there by using the Berthorp Lodestone. Speak to Gommeld outside the entrance. Open the door to go inside the guild. Speak to Harolak Menorus and select option 1. I need to talk to you about Lucian. Head to the southwest corner of the building. Climb up the staircase. Open the heavy door to the northeast. Speak to Sloan and select option 1. Recruit Sloan for the hero party. Go back to the eastern room in the White Knight's Castle in Faldor. Speak to Idria. Speak to Akrasay. You can leave the White Knight's Castle now. If you didn't bring everything with you from the beginning, or if you just want to clear some inventory space, especially to bring some food because you might need that, this list is the same list I showed in the beginning, minus the stuff they no longer need. So it's not on the list. You no longer need it. There is one thing that changed though. Everyone needs to now switch to standard or normal spell book, which can be done by going to the Astral Altar in Lunar Isle, which also means you can now use magic to fight things. The Elite Black Armor is still a recommended item, but I'm highlighting in green now because if you are able to buy it, now would be the time to do so. If you're an Iron Man and can't buy it, I will show you where to get it. I would also recommend for everyone to bring at least one emergency teleport, even if it's not to anywhere you need to go, just something to help you quickly get out of somewhere. Anyways, feel free to pause this if you need it, as we're going to continue with the guide now. Go to Black Knight's Fortress. You can get near there by using the Edgeville Lodestone. Wear your disguise to get into the fortress such as the bronze med helm and iron chain body, then open the portcullis to get in. In the southwest corner, climb down a ladder. Along the east wall, right click the floor tile and choose search. Go to your standard or normal spellbook and cast charge air orb on the tile. 
put on the three pieces of the elite black armor set if you have it and climb down the trap door. If you don't have it, then wear your regular armor. Regardless, everyone needs to climb down the trap door. Go a bit north. If you're wearing the elite black armor, the enemies here won't be aggressive towards you. If you don't have it, you can't really do anything about it, but you will need your own set. So the way you get it is you have to kill these elite black knights here until you get all three pieces. So the helmet, plate body, and plate legs. You cannot continue the quest without this set of armor. People with the armor can continue the quest by clicking on the other side of the rope bridge to jump there. Follow the path to northeast. Climb up the wall at the end of the path. Continue north. Go northeast and follow the barricade to get to the other side of it. Follow the path to the west. Head east from here. In the northernmost cell, speak to Silif and select options 1, 2, 3. Go back west. Open the centered solid black door to north. You need 10 free inventory spaces for his next part. Search all the desk and wardrobes, pretty much everything in the room, to obtain three pieces of additional set of elite black armor, three pieces of Dagenhide robe, a strange hella orb, a four dose potion, and a lobster. Do not drink to a store potion and do not eat the lobster. Some objects in the room has look at as the first option when you left click it, so be sure to pay attention to that and right click to search if necessary. On the northern wall, right click the key rack and choose search for a cell key if you haven't already searched this. Exit through the southwest corner by opening the solid black door. Go to sill of cell to the east. Open the cell door. Right click the lobster to use on Silif. Apparently, if you accidentally eat it, any piece of cooked food will work. Then right click the restore potion and use on Silif. He only consumes three doses, so if you accidentally drink one, you should try doing it with a three dose anyways. It should work. Use any piece of your second set of elite black armor on Silif and finish the dialogue to give it to him. Open the cell door to exit. Silv should follow you out and go back into the northern room in the center from before. Open the solid black door. There's a map board that says southeast on the wall. Walk over to it, then speak to Silv to receive a tele orb. Go to the eastern room and use the larger regular tele orb on Dark Squall. After successfully planting the orb, he'll say something to you and the enemies in the room will attack you. You can then teleport out to get out of this place, ideally to the White Knight's Castle in Faldor. You'll soon have to go to the wilderness. So if you want to be prepared for that and want to minimize what you're carrying on you, you only need what's written here. If you don't care and just want to go, you can ignore this. If you need it, then feel free to pause the video. When you're ready, head to the eastern room in the White Knight's Castle in Falador. Speak to Akrasay, then select options 1, 2, 3.
Where are the three pieces of your dag and hide ropes of the hat, top, bottom, then open the cell door to a nearby jail cell to enter? You should be teleported back to this area, go to the northeast corner. Climb up the ladder. Stand in the middle of the stone circle, right click the strange tele orb and choose activate which will use up one law rune and one death rune to teleport you. Follow the northeast path until you're next to the chapel. There's an ice wall to the east that you can climb up around here, so go ahead and do that. Hover your mouse around the closest ledge of chapel, and there's a section which you can jump to. This will put you in the wilderness. Go east to activate a cutscene. After the cutscene, teleport out, ideally to White Knight's Castle of Faldor, and go to a room to the east. Speak to Idria. Go to the Tears of Guthix Cavern, which you can easily teleport to with a games necklace. You may need to come back here a few times, by the way, so it definitely helps to have one with a few charges. If you don't have a teleport, you would have to go through a lumber swamp caves. The entrance to the Tears of Guthix Cavern is in the southeast corner of it. Head to the northern side of the cavern where all the NPCs are. You need to be wearing your dagon high robes. Speak to Movario and select options 3, 1, 3. With a lit sapphire lantern in your inventory, right click any nearby light creature and choose travel into the cavern. The light creature should be attracted to your light source, come near you and take you down into the cavern. Right click the skeleton to north and choose search to get a silver sickle B and a druid pouch with 6 charges. Right click the nearby rocks and choose search and select option 1, yes. Right click where the rocks were, choose search brazier, then choose chisel to receive a fire orb. Go to the northwest corner of the area.
right click the nearby rocks choose search and select option one yes right click where the rocks were choose search brazier then choose chisel to receive an earth orb head to the southwest corner Right click the brazier, choose search, then choose chisel to receive an air orb. Go to southeast corner of the area. Right click the brazier, choose search, then choose chisel to receive a water orb. Head all the way south until you see three skull cavities. I'm going to turn my camera around to face the south wall to see the skull cavities. You need to examine the three recessed blocks. It's a little white thing next to each skull cavity and the examine text will tell you which elemental symbol it is. After examining each one, use the respective elemental orb on that recessed block. So for example, if I examine a recessed block and it tells me the fire symbol, I would use the fire orb on that recessed block and you get an elemental cube or key in your inventory in exchange for each one. Climb up the wall in the middle to reach the last skull cavity. Use the water orb on that recessed block. Jump down the wall twice to reach the bottom again. Both of your hands need to be free for the next part. You now need to enter each skull nose cavity. You can start with any one. The process for all of them are the same. When you're in one of the cavities, follow the path all the way to the end. Examine the door lock at the end and the examine text will tell you what elemental symbol it has. You're going to take that elemental key in your inventory and use it on that lock. So if you examine the door lock and it says there's an air symbol, then I'll use the air key on it. You can leave the area by crawling back through the tunnel to the other side. Repeat this with the other two skull cavities on the bottom level. When you're done going through all three skull cavities, clamp the walls twice. Use the fire key on the recess block at the top. Right click the stone cube and choose search. 
climb through the cave opening of the skull cavity behind you. And you follow the path and go to the big room in the middle of the area, you'll see that it splits off into a bunch of different paths. This part will vary for different players, so I can show you how to do it, but I can't give you your exact solution. The first thing you want to do is go down each path. At the end of it, you'll find a statue. If you examine each one, it'll tell you what that statue is depicting. You want to write these down, and it may also help to know which statue was where. So the logical thing to do is to start from one of the paths on the far end, then you work your way around either clockwise or counterclockwise, it doesn't matter, as long as you know and you write them down in that order. So like I said, each statue is depicting something. What that thing is depicting matches up to a particular potion. There are only 8 statues and 13 possible potions it can represent. You then need to get the ingredients for each of these potions and put them in their respective statues. I am going to give you a list of every potion and the ingredients after I'm done explaining this. Before I show you that though, there are two ways you can get the ingredients. The easiest way is to leave to go buy them and come back if possible if you're not an Iron Man. And the other way, you can obtain all the ingredients without even having to leave this room which I'll explain how to do in a minute. I want to make a quick disclaimer for the people who are going to leave to get the ingredients. You will have to fight something soon after this part so I would recommend coming back with armor and weapons for two combat styles as well as bringing a bunch of food and super store potions are highly recommended. You can bring a beast of burden familiar to help you carry more since I know your inventory space is going to be limited. Besides that you do not need anything else besides your game necklace and sapphire lantern just to get back here. Anyways there's another way you can get the ingredients without having to leave this room but but it's a bit of a pain unless you're an Iron Man, then this may actually be easier. You may have noticed there are a couple yellow dots walking around this place on your mini map. Those things are spirit druids. You can use your druid pouch on one of them and they'll drop random ingredients. Do not lose these by any means unless you're specifically using them on the statue because I don't think you can get duplicates, which is why it's important to know which statue is where so you can easily just go to the one you need to clear up space if needed. You might need to juggle things in your inventory if you're doing this, by the way. I also want to note that every time you use a druid pouch on druid spirit it uses up a charge do not use up all your charges or you lose the pouch six charges isn't enough anyways so the way you recharge it is by standing near one of these root or vine things on the floor right click your silver sickle b choose bloom which will cause a flower to spawn on the root pick the flower and druid pouches can only be charged three at a time so you need to get three of these but before you charge anything if you have any mortmire fungus from the druid spirits you need to drop those first or else they're going to end up in the pouch meaning you'll lose them and they are potion ingredients that you need. You can put the flowers in your druid pouch for three or more charges and pick up the Mortmire fungus after. If you have the Ouroboros pouch, which is the druid pouch with unlimited charges from temple trekking, you do not need to worry about the regular pouch losing charges, but for some reason they designed it where you can only use the regular pouch on the druid spirits, so you need to have both on you even if you just want to use the Ouroboros pouch. When you use all the ingredients for the correct potion on the correct statue, you receive something back called a domen. This will of course take up space. You can put the domen on the stone table in the middle room. Placing all eight domains here is how you proceed to the next part, but you are allowed to do this one at a time instead of doing all eight at once, so that should help with the space issue. Even if you gathered all the ingredients here, you may need to leave after to get combat supplies as you will get into a fight. You can put all the domains on the stone table first before you leave. The fight does not start right away. As mentioned before, you should come back with armor and weapons for two combat styles as well as bring as much food as you can, and some super stores are highly recommended. You can bring a beast of burden familiar to help carry more. Besides that, you do not need anything else besides your game necklace and sapphire lantern to get back here. In the next part, I'm going to show you a full list of the potion and its ingredients, then right after, I'll show you how to get back here if you left. On screen right now is a list of potions and all its ingredients. Some of them have two sets of ingredients because they sometimes allow you to use the regular version or the super version. I grabbed this directly from the wiki and one of them for one of my statues was wrong. I removed the wrong one, but unfortunately, if it's one of the five that I didn't get, then I wasn't able to test it myself. And I apologize in advance if anything on here is incorrect, although there should be a very low possibility of that. Up next, I'm going to explain how to get back to this area if you need to leave. Then the following part will go the next steps after completing the statues and potions part. Feel free to pause this if you need it as I'm moving on with the video now. Now. You can get back there by going to the Tears of Guthix's Cavern with a lit sapphire lantern in your inventory. Right click one of the light creatures and choose travel into cavern. Go all the way south.
clap the wall twice. Climb through a cave opening. If you still need to do the whole statue and potions part first, then go ahead and do that. But if you did all that and you put all eight domains on the stone circle in the middle, you're ready to move on to the next part. Go to the middle room, which should be open now, and follow the path to the south. Right click the mysterious stone and choose search and select option 1. Yes, I need to investigate this even if it kills me. You then need to fight a balance elemental which can switch between melee, range, and magic. You can safe spot it behind a pillar which will prevent it from using melee attacks. You can just pray to switch between its range and magic attacks to help prevent some damage if you wish to do so. He can also drain your stats which is why his barons have super restore potions. If you die or teleport out for any reason, you can come back here the exact same way you did before and search the mysterious stone again to start the fight. After the fight, right click the mysterious stone again and choose search for a cutscene. Speak to Mavario and select options 1, 2, 3, 4. Continue the conversation with Lucian, then select options 1, 2, 3. Kill the two tormented demons that appear, which is actually a really easy fight because touching the stone the second time actually boosted all your stats up to 255. The only thing you need to look out for here is that they use protection prayers, which they can switch, and that's why you need the two combat styles. It doesn't matter that you're level 255, you still can't hit through protection prayers. Besides that, yeah, it's super easy. Speak to Idria and select option 1. Yes, a teleport out of here would be good. Continue the conversation with Idria and Falador. Hope you found this video helpful. If you did, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell for future videos to come if you haven't already. There are also links in the description below for my Patreon, donation link, Twitter, and Discord where you can interact with me. Donations can also be directly made through YouTube now. Thanks option, near like button, below the video. Catch you later. Peace.